Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's morning devotion. And um, today, I've just uh, got a devotion to share with you that I've got from the um, the U Bible app. And um, this is an app that I think is really good. It's, you can have all various versions of of the Bible available um, to to read. You can go in and out of different versions, and uh, it's free, which is a big thing. And um, it's also got access to, I mean, hundreds of, of Bible reading plans and you can search through and just pick out whichever one you fancy. You can actually sign up with friends on this app and so if you're doing a, a study you can do it just on your own or you can do it with a friend and you can share your comments with each other. It's really very flexible. Um, and so today I found this um, plan which uh, is called Good News Encouragement for a World in Crisis. And I thought that might actually fit in quite well right now uh, because it feels very much like the world is a little bit in crisis. I mean, we're beginning to move through and things are beginning to ease, which is great, but we're not out of the woods yet and we have to still be mindful of the um, guidelines that we're being uh, passed on to us through the government sources. Um, but for the moment, I just wanted to read you out this devotional and there's a fair bit of scripture reading that goes with it, which I'll get back to in a minute. So let me read you what it says. God has good plans. We're living in an unprecedented time as we navigate the life-threatening and economy-shaking struggles we're facing because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the past, we've seen catastrophic diseases, disasters and wars impact various countries, but this is different. At this time, the whole world has something in common. We're trying to survive a deadly virus. So, as followers of Jesus, how do we make sense of this? What do we do with our questions to God and our questions of God? How do we find good news in a continual stream of bad news? And how do we grasp how this fits into the all familiar passage of Jeremiah 29 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. This verse gives hope and it is our spiritual security blanket in hard times is printed on t-shirts, etched on coffee mugs and stamped on greetings cards. While God is a hope giver, we have to understand the context of this cherished verse. Jeremiah prophesied to the Israelites in the southern kingdom of Judah before they were taken captive in 586 BC by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. In Jeremiah 27, he prophesied that they would soon serve this king, his son and his grandson and that everything would be under their control. And you can read about that in Jeremiah 27, verses M6 and 7. In the next chapter, a false prophet named Hananiah told the people that God would free them and restore everything to them in two years. Jeremiah challenged Hananiah because of his lies. He also said Hananiah would die and in two months he was dead. In chapter 29, Jeremiah encourages the people to live their lives while they're in exile to work, marry, plant, eat and multiply. He tells them they'll be in Babylon for 70 years and then they'll be brought home again. God's plans of a hope and a future for his chosen people probably didn't match what their idea was. They wanted to go home, yet God said it would be 70 years. They wanted their own king, yet God said they would serve the Babylonian king. They wanted to flourish in their homeland, but God said to do that under a government that was holding them captive. Possibly the hardest part was that the older generation would never go back home. They would die in a foreign land, serving a foreign king. We can't insist on our idea of a bright and hopeful future. We tend to be short-sighted and earthly-minded, but God's ways are so much higher than our, what our minds can grasp. His plan is better, and it will include forever with him in heaven, not just a short portion of our lives on earth. If our hope is laced with doubt, fear and anxiety, we can change that today. We need to eliminate our hope so attitude and replace it with a no so mindset. Our hope should never be tethered to the conveniences and pleasures the world offers or the ease of a situation. Instead, we fasten our minds to the promises and truths in the word of God and fix our sights on the day when our bright, glorious and eternal future is made a reality. Instead of wishing the way away our days in the predicament we're in, let's have confidence that God will deposit hope into us, 
no matter what we're facing. And um, that's just the short devotional that goes with this. But there's actually quite a bit of Bible reading if you want to have a look at that yourself. And it's suggesting that you read Jeremiah, the whole chapter of 27 and the whole chapter of 28, which gives you the context um, that that very famous verse in Jeremiah 29, 11 comes in about God giving us that hope and the, and the future. And um, it also uh, includes that section in Jeremiah 29 from verse 1 to 14. And then um, the, the sort of banner scripture for this particular devotional is um, Romans 15, verse 13. And it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, amen. I think that's a fabulous thought that we would ha have so much hope that it would be overflowing. And, um, you know, what that means is that we don't just have enough hope for ourselves. We don't just have enough hope to keep us going, to keep our heads above water, to keep our eyes, you know, looking up the way. We've got enough to spare. We've got hope overflowing. So we've got enough for those around us, those who perhaps are struggling a bit more at this time, those who perhaps don't have um, God in their lives. They haven't surrendered to Christ in the, in the way that we have. And so we can be a help to others and, and we can share that hope that we have. And scripture does tell us that we should have, uh, we should be ready in and out of season to share the reason for that hope. And so, um, you know, in these days when people potentially have a lot more questions uh, about what is going on in the world than they normally do, let's all be ready with the, with the reason for our hope so that we can share that with people if we have the opportunity. So let's just pray together. Lord, we just thank you so much that you give us hope. Lord, thank you that the hope that you give us isn't the sort of fingers crossed and hope for the best kind of hope. But Lord, it's a solid hope that we can rely on. Lord, because you are the rock and we're standing on you. And therefore, if what you say is hope, Lord, it's not just a, a might happen and we'll wait and see. Lord, we know it's a certainty and it's a surety. So Lord, help us to have our eyes fixed on you in these days that, Lord, we will see um, your good news in the midst of all of the news that we come across in uh, and around our world today. Thank you, Lord, that you do have a plan and a purpose for us. And, Lord, I just want to pray for each one of us, Lord, that you would help us to fix our eyes on that, Lord, and, and help us to be prepared to accept the plan and the purpose that you have, even if it might look a little bit different to the plan and the purpose that we fancy. Lord, you do know best and we want to submit and surrender before you today with that in mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have promised never to leave us, that you will lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit in these days and into the future. Amen. Yeah, so uh, God bless you all today and um, I just pray that whatever you find to do today, that you will go into that day with hope in your heart and joy in your step. And we'll see you again really soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.